All right, Sagar, what are you looking at? Well, something I've always found frustrating about the gun control debate is how little it has really changed in my lifetime. Should people be allowed to own AR-15 style rifles or not? Should we have more background checks or not? Every once in a while, some ancillary issue pops up, bump stocks, ghost guns, but at its core, the debate remains the same. Should Americans have more or less access to semi-automatic rifles? My own biases aside, what I always like to do in these situations, as I did during the Ukraine crisis, is just take a, take a step back and consider all of the history. So let's go back to the founding of America. Much has been written about the Second Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. Ratified on December 15th, 1791, was and reads in the Second Amendment, quote, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. The NRA and people like me like to focus on the latter part. After well-regulated militia, people who favor gun control focus on the first. So who's right? Well, honestly, kind of both. The founders almost certainly did mean a well-regulated militia, but by that they also meant all of us, because in 1792, President George Washington signed the Second Militia Act, which declares every able-bodied white citizen, of course, between the age of 18 to 45, should be enrolled in the militia and should thus be required to obtain a firearm in order to remain a citizen in good standing. This muddies the waters, so everybody was in the militia, but also everybody needed a gun. The first hint at an individual right to bear arms arose in U.S. jurisprudence in 1822 in the state of Kentucky. Kentucky in 1813 passed a law banning concealed weapons, which was interpreted by the state as banning swords that were concealed inside of canes. <laughs> This did not sit well with some citizens who brought a court case and won with the state declaring that the law violated the right to bear arms as codified in the U.S. Constitution. From there, things get very tricky in the post-colonial period. A litany of states from Tennessee to Arkansas to Georgia struck down any attempts at restricting firearms, except there was one catch, which is that they struck down firearm restrictions on white people. In fact, as I researched this monologue, I found that the original and early attempts at all gun control in the United States are extraordinarily racist in their origins. At the same time that state courts in the South were guaranteeing the right of white citizens to bear arms, they also were upholding and passing laws that allowed citizens to go into any black person's home to search for weapons, to ban even free blacks from carrying arms, and ensuring at every turn that black Americans in no way had access to guns to challenge the Southern status quo pre-Civil War. The Civil War, of course, resolved the slavery question for all time in America, but it also prompted the first federal attempts at defining gun rights in America. It culminated in Presser versus Illinois, 1886, which said it was a Second Amendment right of individuals, not militias, based upon the interpretation that I've given above, that unless restricted by the state, it was the right of every American to purchase a firearm. That was later overturned in 2020. And actually it took, or sorry, in 2010, where they actually took it further and said that the right to bear arms stands under the 14th Amendment of the Constitution. But with the standard of 1886 in place, we enter the paradigm of the modern era. Guns are now a right in America as codified by the US Supreme Court. So the debate then became what kind of guns? The modern era struck with a vengeance as firearm technology evolved. When the nation was eventually shocked by the St. Valentine's Day Massacre of 1929, when seven gangsters were shot to death in Chicago by associates of Al Capone using Thompson submachine guns. That incident ignited a national discussion about guns, what type of guns people should be allowed to own, and it culminated in the first federal legislation of its kind for gun control, the National Firearms Act of 1934, which established the Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms Agency and put in place the first regulations on certain types of weapons, including taxation and later legislation, which established the FFL system of purchasing and registering firearms. From there, the next wave of gun control actually did not come until 1968. It was after the high-profile assassinations of JFK, MLK, Bobby Kennedy, Malcolm X, and many more with the Gun Control Act of 1968. The 68 law was the first 
federally of its kind to stop felons, the mentally ill, and others from purchasing guns, in addition to requiring serial numbers from that point forward on all guns to impose regulation and licensing. Then, finally, after some brief dalliances with rolling back some of those regulations and more, the most stringent and last large piece of legislation that has passed was the famous Brady Bill. It was named after the press secretary of Ronald Reagan, who was wounded by John Hinckley. The Brady Bill, in conjunction with the 1994 assault weapons ban, created the National Instant Criminal Background Check System for when you buy a gun. It also banned semi-automatic rifles from purchase for Americans from 1994 to 2004. As I mentioned earlier, results are honestly pretty mixed on whether the assault weapons ban did anything at all. A 2004 study by the Justice Department said it had a negligible impact on crime and gun deaths. As far as mass shootings, they said it could have, could have had an impact, but there isn't a lot of ways to know given how rare they are. And of course, with regards to school shooting, the 1999 Columbine shooting still happened under the assault weapons ban. That basically brings us to where we are today. And again, why I find it so frustrating, the maximalist position of the gun control side today is an assault weapons ban, which we literally already tried. So do we not have any imagination in this country to try anything new? The confines of our debate are simple. DC versus Heller in 2008 ruled unequivocally, quote, the Second Amendment guarantees an individual right to possess a firearm unconnected with service in a militia and to use that arm for traditionally lawful purposes such as self-defense within the home. Under that standard, which is not going to change, we have a few simple realities to face. Guns are not going anywhere. The most maximalist position of today in gun control has already been tried with no evidence that it actually worked. Again, marginally, I have said, sure, some background check systems are fine as long as they are not used as a national database of firearms. But what really strikes me is those original attempts at gun control and the spirit behind them. There is a reason the Southerners tried very hard to keep guns away, not only from slaves, but free blacks. And because, to me, guns embody the spirit of individual autonomy baked into the American idea and our expansion across the frontier. That when shit hits the fan, the only person you can really count on is yourself. Ask the parents in Uvalde, Texas, who had to storm past cops and were reluctant to kill a mass shooter to save their own kids. And then ask yourself whether you don't want everything in your power to ensure that in a similar situation, you can do what needs to be done. Because from where I'm sitting here, just about the worst idea that we have is to give idiots in charge more power over us, especially power over our ability to take matters into our own hands if they fail us. I was really interested, uh, actually, in the history. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.